the second um, R scripting video that we are going to use for the September 30th class. Um, this one will follow the tidy census, which I would recommend you uh, do first if you're prepping for class, just because there are some packages that we will install, um, you know, ahead of that. If you haven't done so already, that will also reference here. Uh, and that one I'll throw in, you know, a couple more uh, just sort of basic R, um, you know, discussion and examples. Um, you know, again, I use R a little bit to mostly do some of the stuff I'm showing you on these videos, right, to sort of easily grab uh, data through several websites and, and maybe to really kind of open and, and quickly model um, large data sets. But it's not my primary, um, you know, uh, uh, scripting language or even sort of analytical package. Uh, that said, you know, those who really do use it and, and sort of the, you know, even basic stuff I've been able to play with uh, really do show it's a profound and, and wonderful, um, you know, piece of software and scripting language to play with. So I highly encourage, you know, after you have the exposure from my class and, um, you know, what you'll get in quantitative methods, you know, you really sort of take advantage, if you like it, of, of sort of other opportunities to expand your abilities with it while you are still at school. So uh, similar to the last video, right, the first thing I want you to do when you open up our studio is come up here and create a new uh, project. Um, you know, as I mentioned previous, it's really, really sort of critical that you save the project, um, you know, as a directory. We'll sort of just go through the steps real quick. New directory, new project, uh, and then create it as a subdirectory of desktop or some other folder you can find easy, especially if you're on a Mac. You just don't want to, uh, you know, create some of the outputs we'll have here and not be able to find them. Um, you know, but from now I've got mine set on my project here. Nothing in my environment, nothing really in my files except for the script that I gave you. We're going to run off of the easy OSM script. Um, and so let's open that and we'll get to work. So this video is the twin to sort of the OpenStreetMap video that's on my channel where I kind of introduce what OpenStreetMap is and what's available. And we really go through Geofabric, um, you know, which is a nice way to really pull data down at, uh, you know, somewhat higher levels. Uh, typical coverages are like whole states. And that's cool, and a lot of data comes in, um, you know, but then you got to sort of manipulate the data after that, um, you know, and maybe narrow it down to smaller areas and, and pick out the pieces that you want. And so the package I'm going to just very briefly give you some background to here is called the um, OSM data package um, in, in R. And really what I found it to be useful for is it's, it's a nice uh, sort of like surgical way to grab open street map data, right? So like the Wikipedia of mapping, I can use this to really come in, quickly search an area um, of the country that I wanna grab in, specify the sort of type of information I want, a building, a road, whatever. Um, and then quickly sort of get it and, and load it in. So it's, again, a, a more surgical approach here, easier when we're working in pro, um, you know, to just grab like one sort of class of data and pull it together. Um, I don't really care what you use, if you use this or Geofabric, or, you know, if you don't ever use OpenStreetMap again, uh, I would, you know, advise you not to do that because it's great, but there's multiple ways to sort of grab this stuff. Um, the sort of package itself can find more information here up in the link. Feel free to sort of check it out. Uh, a reminder before, right, whenever you see the hashtags in the green, it's essentially me just saying, um, you know, this is annotations, me sort of describing what we're about to do and everything in sort of black and blue is what we're going to run. Um, so the first time you're going to run this, you know, you want to come here and install the OSM data packages. So you click in the line and hit run. Uh, it's also really important to note that, um, you know, for some of these other packages here, like Tidyverse, Dplyr, SF Janitor. I'm gonna use all of that in here at some point. Um, you know, maybe not Tidyverse and Dplyr, but they're really good uh, things to keep in mind if you know you use the kernel of a script I've written here and maybe expand on it. You're certainly gonna to want to have those available. Um, I don't know what your process was. Maybe for some reason, despite my um, you know frequent guidance, this is the first video you've watched, right? You didn't do the tidyverse, you didn't sort of install uh, these packages already. And if that's the case, you might come down here and do library tidyverse or library dplyr or library sf janitor and it's gonna run an error. 
If that's the case, then just duplicate what you see up here, right? Install packages, tidyverse, install packages, dplyr, so on and so forth. But once you've got them run, let's run through and run each of them, run them, right? This brings effectively my tidyverse, my dplyr language, my sf language, and my janitor language, right? So I've got all the stuff that I'm going to use that's effectively here. And now we can go to the sort of three or four steps that actually uh, grab data from OpenStreetMap. So this first one here is sort of bounding box, right? So, you know, if I were to open up OpenStreetMap again really quick, just as sort of a reminder, you know, go to OpenStreetMap. You'd remember that, like, when you're looking at the data, you can quickly pull stuff down, you know, like if I sort of emulated what we're doing here and did Camden, New Jersey, you know, it sort of zoom in down on this area. Um, one of the first things that I would probably be doing here is, oops, I don't want that, coming up to export like I did on the other video, and you'd be sort of setting a box, right? We'd manually select sort of a bounding area, and then anything within that box would pull down the data for me, and I would see it in sort of various layers, and it would come as sort of a, you know, an OSM. Um, that's one of the reasons that we went here to sort of GeoFabrik or, or these other places, uh, you know, quicker and easier ways to get formats and shape files that would go right in um, Arc Pro. Well, that's what we're doing here with this concept of a bounding box, right? So this function here, get BB, what we're effectively saying is like make one of those bounding boxes. And the really cool thing about the way this is set up is it allows you to almost emulate what I just did there you know, where I went and searched, um, you know, like Memphis, Tennessee, and it went to the area and created sort of a bounding box around that place. And, you know, it has the ability to, um, you know, trip up a little bit and, and, and be sort of some, somewhat smart. And, and really that's all you kind of have to do here is effectively create a variable name, which I've made BB1 or BB2. You could name that cheese, bounding box, whatever you want. You could call it Camden or Ardmore. And I'm saying like, you're gonna equal this function get BB, and then I just type effectively in my city there, um, or my county, or whatever I'm looking at. And you know, I uh, advise you once you sort of get familiar with this script, start to change this, right? You know, do one for Baltimore, Maryland, do one for San Diego, and you'd quickly and easily jump around to those areas and all subsequent steps would pull the data at those geographies, right? So I'm gonna come in and hit run, Right, I've got my Camden one and my Ardmore, and this again would just let me quickly and easily call data for Camden or call data for Ardmore if I wanted. So again, I'm setting up the mechanism that later I will use as an input so that OpenStreetMap knows the geography that I want to be looking, knows the area. So I've got my sort of geographic window, my bounding box set up. You know, you can see what's sort of cool about the way I did that if you look over at BB1 and BB2 up here. Um, these are effectively the coordinate points, right? The bounding coordinate points that we would need to ultimately uh, gather and extract that data. So um, I think there's actually even, we're not going to do it in this video, but I encourage those that are reading through the expanded reading. There's a, apparently another cool step here called trim OSM data. Um, you know, the bounding box creates a rectangle that fits like Camden or Ardmore in its length, but you'd also do sort of trim uh, OSM data and it will actually only bring back the data that actually fully overlaps with your city boundary. So it's almost like a clip, you know, a function that we'll learn uh, in a few weeks in class. So I've got that and then I'm going to come down to my next part here, which is I'm actually going to extract the shape features that are in those bounding boxes. And the information for that is going to be here. It's right, these things that I've stored under X and Y, um, I'm going to keep the Y open um, for just a second, um, you know, so we can really quickly like grab two different things and compare them in pro. But if you're going to use the script as sort of a kernel, you probably only need one and then you're going to be sort of changing the values. But here's the way this works, right? All the end of the day, I'm storing it as X, right? I'm storing something as, um, um, why am I having a blank here? Sorry, I'm storing something here as uh, like the value X, but that could be cheese. You know, that could be anything I wanted. Remember, you know you're storing something as a variable if the first thing that follows it is that less than sign and the minus. You know, that is effectively acting as an equal. And what I'm saying here, right, is the OPQ is sort of a standard call that uses the um, OSM overpass API. So I'm effectively setting up the language 
to call a query. First thing you're ever gonna wanna replace here is what's in the B box. So I'm saying, right, my bounding box that I'm doing should be, boom. If you're gonna use this script again, right, build this off of uh, you know, a kernel that you use and, and grab sort of other information to put in here and, and grow it, this is the first thing you'd be changing, right? Whatever bounding boxes you set up here, call them down here, right? So if you wanted to search Ardmore, you'd be BB2. If you made a third one that said Baltimore and made it BB3, you'd enter that. If you changed BB1 to Philadelphia, then the geography would change to Philly. Then you're piping it, right, with sort of percentage, um, you know, greater than percentage. That effectively means like pass this information on to the next key feature we have here, which is add OSM feature. Add OSM feature is effectively saying like, what OSM feature should I be pulling? And your first question should not be, what OSM feature am I pulling? Your first question should be, what the hell is an OSM feature? And that is where a nice link that I've given you guys um, um, right up here, sort of the wiki open period map features as well as I've loaded on Canvas is this awesome little wiki here, which walks through effectively all of the various tags and information you can find, right? So anything you can get on OpenStreetMap, which again, right, is only as good as the coverage you're in. It's people are generating this. So you might be in an area that doesn't have a lot of data. You might be in a city where it's got a ton. But this gives you all the stuff that you could access. And so in the example here, we're going to want buildings. So I'll go to buildings. And you notice that the way that these features work is they're composed of both a key and a value. So think about key as like a really big category, buildings, and think of value as sort of like subcategories within it. So by working with them together, in like the example I'm about to give, building and apartments, I could pull all of the apartment data. I could pull anything that's coded as a house. I could pull anything that's coded as residential. I could pull anything coded as office. I could keep going down even further, right, maybe and get some line features, and I could pull highway primary roads. I could pull highway linking roads. I could pull highway pedestrian roads, right, cycle roads, so on and so forth. This is just language that OpenStreetMap, right, the Wikipedia of mapping uses to code data. As we mentioned in the first OSM video, the one that sort of gives you an intro to what it is and gathering the data from it, the importance of OpenStreetMap is because it functions more like a Wikipedia of mapping, um, you get like, you, you don't have to necessarily worry like, am I in a place where I can access GIS data from my county, right? You can almost find user created data anywhere in sort of the world. So it becomes a really good resource to have in addition to looking at whatever, um, you know, open data portals you have in your, in your city. Um, so use this and then enter that information here, right? So you want buildings and apartments, that's what I would enter. Um, so that's all, right? Key, you'd pick whatever key you want. Value, you'd pick whatever value you want. And then the last thing you do is you pipe it into this thing called OSM data SF. And all you're doing there is creating the OSM data, right? Which exists as an object um, formatted for um, OpenStreetMap and effectively pipes it through to a simple feature so that you can ultimately work um, with it as a simple feature in R, which is you know, an important step we have to do if we eventually want to get this out into something that we can look at in Arc Pro. So come on up here and run. All right, and there you go. Uh, wait until sort of the other line comes down here. You know, that's going to tell us like I've gotten sort of um, you know, the data for you. I don't know why it's taken so long. But there we go, right? So I've got my little thing and, and I've got my apartments. So X now, what X stores is apartments, right? Things that are coded as impart apartments from OpenStreetMap that are from Camden, right? Because I put BB1 in here, BB1 is Camden, and I put the building and the value as apartments. This other thing, Y, I, I literally just put this so that we could do a quick example together. Um, you know, with Y, it, everything else is the same, you know, it's BB1, so it's still going to be Camden. Uh, but the difference is that I didn't put a value. And so what I'd be doing here is I'd effectively be saying, like, bring me anything that's coded as billion. So I'd be get all of this, and it's going to bring a lot more data. And then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to look at, like, the various fields. Um, you know, the building field, for example, or the amenity field, to actually find what it is. So the trade-off with doing this is a little less surgical, right? More general 
is you're getting a lot of stuff back. It's going to take longer to run this, especially like if I were to do this in Philly or Memphis, I could be sitting here for like an hour while it populates all that and it's going to throw a mess of stuff at me, but you can still do it, right? And I encourage you to sort of practice with both, open the attribute tables as we're going to do and sort of see what comes back to you. So I'll do a run here. Again, it's going to take a tiny bit longer, but you want to sort of wait until you get that um, line that comes out and bing, bada, boom. So I've got my apartments and I've got my buildings. One is stored as X, one is stored as Y. Both of them, because I entered my bounding box as BB1, are coming for Camden, New Jersey. So I have two last steps. The way that this looks, and I may forget the function here, but I'm just going to try it. If I do name X, hopefully I don't put my foot in my mouth. No, it's not name. I have to remember um, what I want it to be. Maybe it's, is it names? Maybe it's names. All right, perfect. So I didn't put my foot in my mouth. So I did names. All I'm doing there is showing that like we pulled, right, buildings and apartments, stored it as X. But the way the data is actually coming back because it's coded as an open street map is like a lot of stuff is in there. It's not just like what we wanted it to be, which were the apartments, but you have sort of all of these elements come back. And the frustrating thing is that like some of these might be blank. Like there's not really any line features. There's not really any point features. You know, B box is sort of our bounding box. The overpass call is the, the sort of information of how we did it. So I'm only sort of showing that example to you because I want you to understand that we can't just take Y or X and push them right into something for um, Arc Pro. We need this sort of interim step that's going to create something I'm naming my features. And what it's going to do is you can see the critical element here, right? I've taken X, which for us was in Camden, and it was my apartment buildings. And I've put the thing dollar OSM underscore polygons. What I'm effectively saying here is take that um, vector object, that X, and bring out anything that is coded as a polygon. So now what I'm getting is polygons. And you are just going to familiarize yourself in time with sort of what is in each of these classes and what is in each of these keys. Because if it's a point value, you would actually say, you know, X dollar... Um, points and that will bring out the points. If it's a line, you would say, you know, X dollar OSM lines and that'll bring out the lines. So again, it's a necessary thing. I'm storing it as my features. And notice I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm piping that through to something called clean names. Uh, clean names comes from the janitor toolbox that we have up here. And it's just a really good function to have that effectively cleans the, like the, the names of fields and attributes. I've just found in running this tool that if I set it up like this, the nice thing that I'm doing is ensuring that I don't have any sort of uh, improper naming conventions in the field names that'll trip up my fields when I try to pass this on to Arc Pro. So again, I'm storing it as a new object called My Features, and what that's going to do is it's going to take X, which we've decided is apartment buildings from Camden. It's going to pull out the polygons. It's going to clean their attributes and store it here. So if you want to build from this tool, the only thing you'd really be changing is you can choose to rename my features if you want, you know, or you would be changing Y if you're looking at Y, you know, X if you're staying with X, and you'd be moving between OSM polygons or lines or um, polylines depending on what you're looking at or points. So I'll run it, bing bada boom, it's got my feature, and I can go on to my last step, right? So I'm just going to set something up here similar to what we did in our tidy census video where I'm saying ST right. It's going to be my features, right, or whatever I save this as is what I'm doing down here. And comma, I'm saving it as a geo package. So this is the only thing that's new to us. Geo package, uh, in my playing around with how you sort of convert OpenStreetMap data, it's just a format that tends to work more in, um, in Arc Pro. I couldn't really explain why, but when I would export this as a shape, uh, you know, seven times out of ten it would work, and then three times out of ten it would strip up an error and say duplicate field, field name incorrect. And so I just found that bringing it in as a geo package, which effectively creates a geo database, um, you know, or a, a, a sibling of a geo database in ArcGIS or Arc Pro, 
uh, is a much sort of smoother way. And then once you have that information, you know, it'll be easy enough for you to quickly, um, um, you know, um, take it out and, and put it in sort of another format. So I'll do run here, right? It wrote all my features. There we go. I've got this new thing called GeoPackage. Um, which is great, right? And now I can actually open up my uh, ArcGIS Pro if I want, and I'm in on Camden and can zoom. So I'm going to refresh my desktop. So I'll find where I've been storing stuff here, and that's the uh, sort of OSM data demo. I've got my new features, and you know I'll bring in my features. And look at that, I've got my apartments. Right, and I can click on the apartments and learn a little bit about them and see the fields. The name is 11 Address Cooper. This is the stuff that comes with the stuff that sometimes people fill it. Sometimes they'll fill in the building levels and the address and apartments, and that's awesome, and now I have it. Let's just really quick before we close this though, what if we had done this for Y? Rich, remember we were storing all of the buildings? Let's sort of see how the outcome would be different. So the thing is I need to change some things first, right? So maybe I'll make this my features will instead be a Y, right? So I'm taking the polygons out of that one and not that. So I'm gonna to need to rerun this. It's gonna do its thing. And same thing here, let me not rewrite that. Let me write my features, you know, all buildings. So I'm just changing the name down here. I'm still passing something called my features through it. And I'm gonna run. It's gonna do its thing. Notice the key difference, right? 395 features, so the 395 called apartment. But now it's every building smushed together. So there's 10,000 buildings, all kinds of field types, and they've all been merged together. And let's come and sort of look what that actually appears to be. And you can see the crazy sort of difference in coverage, right? And now what's going to be important is that I'm going to need to actually dive in. So let's go to you know something that we did see before. We know this one's an apartment. So I can click on the building. And there's all kinds of fields that will be available. And geez, I need to scroll all the way down to something called building till it tells me what it is. It's an apartment, right? And all the stuff that would be available for apartment could be here. But that might be different for whatever the heck this is, you know, which I'm going to scroll down and this is going to be a, where's my building? Maybe this is commercial, right? And it's 18 levels and some fields will be filled in and, and some will not. And so with some of the skills that we'll learn about selecting by attributes or moving, you could take this sort of bigger building file and move through and extract it out. But I just wanted you to sort of see how depending on whether you had a key and a value or just a key, it could slightly change what you're getting. So that's the simple OSM surgical script, right? It interfaces with it. You yourself would kind of study up on what the different keys and, um, and, and values are. You run it through here and it gives you something that you can quickly and cleanly load into ArcGIS and start mapping, um, you know, at pretty much any place in the country that has this information.